Finally, today I'm going to give you some inside stories about uh, what's going on in China about Bitcoin. And uh, talking about uh, uh, discovering Bitcoin, the first time we're discovering the Bitcoin is uh, from online. Of course, that you know, uh, uh, there is a very famous article from uh, Sato Satoshi, and he, uh, you know, uh, talking about you know how amazing that Bitcoin works and blockchain works, and that inspired a very first early adopter uh, in China. Uh, one of one of the one of those is obviously Olianli, and he uh, find out that you know Bitcoin is very amazing. That's why he, uh, you know, wanted to do something with Bitcoin, like starting. Uh, uh, start a business with big one. So uh, he got this idea, learned how uh, how about the big one, and then he uh, you know tried to uh, find out if uh, if it works as a business in China uh, in uh, by by uh, you know building up a, a big one team. So when we're building up the four B, we uh, uh, Liam he was actually the CEO and he grad, uh, graduated from Tsinghua University. And then after that, he went to Oracle for two years as an engineer. So he uh, he do have um, he do have a lot of connections in uh, technology, and uh, inspired uh, by a uh, Bitcoin how amazing it is. And then he finds his partner, which is Du Jun, um, is also our co-founder and our C CMO. He's from Tencent. So Du Jun is actually very very young, and he. Um, Went to Tencent is because he built up his own business and bought by uh, Tencent after two after two and a half years. So he like suddenly become rich because he have like a business. Uh, it's called a discuss. Like uh, it's a forum. Like people are going go online and talking about some specific topic. And his forum is very popular in China back then. So Tencent bought up. And then he become one of the uh, number uh, member in uh, Tencent. But after like a two years, he he felt that you know he had different directions with Tencent. He wanted to building his own business, and that's why uh, Liam find him and then uh, talk about Bitcoin, how amazing it is, and then boom, they wanted to build up a company. So you know, uh, um, so far, uh, Hobi is uh, invested by Sequoia, type, um, Sequoia Capital and Jinfang. So Sequoia is A round, Jinfang is Android round. So uh, I think um, by, uh, by, the, uh, by the round of Sequoia, uh, we actually raised, uh, raised funded like one, 1,500 million in total. So that's uh, basically how, uh, you know, at least the uh, Hobi is well funded. And uh, uh, we never uh, worry about the money. Um, and the team is getting stronger and bigger. And right now we're having 130 in just one office uh, in Beijing, located, located in Beijing, like really, really far, like in the middle of nowhere. I used to doesn't you know, like it because I used to live in CBD, like the central of the Beijing. And then uh, when, after I joined Hobi, I went to like really, 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 really far. Like, I drive like a two hours, just one way to get to work. And if it's traffic, they're like two and a half year, uh, two and a half hour. So I hate the traffic in Beijing, but it's a really good company, it's a good location because Baidu, the headquarter of Baidu is there. And the headquarter of Tencent is building and it's almost finished. So Tencent will be also there. So it's kind of like a technology zone. And uh, after they built up a team, they wanted to say that what's the logo, right? What's the name of it? And then we we uh, we actually bought uh, the uh, the the domain name from one of the famous guy, and uh, we called it uh, Huobi, which is the host spell of uh, uh, Firecoin, like Huobi. And uh, uh, because uh, Huobi in China it means currency. If, if you pronounce different way, like Huobi. At the at very, very, very beginning, we wanted to call it Huobi, like currency.com. And but then we felt like, you know, if we call it, like the China government gonna, you know, definitely second day to, you know, close our down and talking to, you know, to us like, what, what are you gonna do? Like, why are you creating a currency? 
So then we without like you know we think uh, with the same spell name, but changing the little bit tone of four uh, of four to four, which could be similar. Um, <laughs> but then I don't I don't know if you get it like a four and four. It's different. So <laughs> huo, <laughs> I'm sorry. So huo is currency. Huo is fire. That's that's Chinese. <laughs> so um, so instead of we call it currency, uh, currency coin, we call it fire coin. So that's how it become like you know popular in China because everybody like hot, like red. You know, red color is uh, really like a lucky care, uh, lucky color in China, and fire is red and, and it's hot. So it's it's a good meaning. So that's why we call it uh, a fire point for B, which is not a currency for B. Okay. All right, and then uh, you can see the character is the, this is the character of fire, and then that is the logo. But if you look at it inside of the circle, our logo. It actually is uh, the character of fire. Can you can you see that? Like the, this is that, and the left is that, and then the right is that, and then the last one is over here. So there are four, how to say, four um, pieces on the character, and there are actually a four pieces you can find in the logo. Okay, someone give me like okay or not? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, um, so that's our logo, and uh, Leon uh, designed it. He actually designed it by himself. And uh, it's a very funny story. Is after we designed this, we look at the China bank. There is a Chinese uh, China commercial bank. It's really like an equator, like ninety degree. It's a, it's a, it's their logo looks like similar to their logo. So we're like design a similar logo to a bank. Like that means that you know uh, how big one can do. Okay. So so we set uh, we set up we built up the uh, the uh, how to say we built up the uh, website. We built up the team in March 2013. And then after that, we uh, you know started doing the website, design the website, hire people and find a space a working space, and then by um, the September 1st in 2013, that's the first day that our website launched. So this is um, on the very top, uh, very bottom left, that's Little's Bar, it's the first day that our exchange launched. And the, um, on, December, on December 1st, uh, one Bitcoin equals to 806 grand, which is like uh, more than 100 or something. Um, you know the exchange rate is at that time okay okay at that time it's still one to like six point five or six point two or something. So uh, the little bar is the first day we got like a one BTC exchange, and uh, that's the first day that our uh, uh, exchange launched. And then all the way goes to eight thousand grand, which that's the highest price in the history of Bitcoin. I think that's equivalent to. Um, uh, three uh, six hundred something U.S. dollar. That's the highest uh, price over here. So this is the whole two thousand six. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, two uh, 20, 2013. This is the whole twenty thirteen. Um, the year that the price uh change sharply goes up. Well, gradually goes up, but there definitely hits the highest price over here, and then. Um, you know, you can see that by November 19, and one BTC equals to a thousand yuan, and that, uh, do, you know, that's after three months that uh, will be launched, and we got like, uh, um, like I think like ten times of the users growing after we launched, just the one day that uh, he did, you know, the highest price uh, of the Bitcoin. So, but then on December 5th, the price you can see, if you see the price is going down very, very much by 35%. Uh, why is it? If you if you don't know, then I can teach you <laughs> that on December 5th, the people people banks of China 
they issued an uh, official, uh, uh, official di digital currency policy, and they actually announced it on December 1st. So by one day, the price is going down 35%. The policy says the banks and payments company were um, prohibited for doing any Bitcoin business. So the original is saying that if you're a bank or financial institute, you are not allowed to provide it services to Bitcoin or Bitcoin related company. So which means that if we are Huobi, like Huobi, if we are the Bitcoin company, we cannot open a bank account in, um, in, um, in China. Which means that when people wanted to exchange to us, there is no banking access. So we're not allowed to having an actual bank account. So, and, and um, uh, the Bitcoin was classified as a vert uh, vertical commodity, which is uh, you know, cl uh, similar <coughs> to other, uh, other uh, foreign countries that dis define as a commodity, and it's legal for people and foreign trade, uh, PVOP. Uh, their, their logic is uh, because the price at that time of Bitcoin, it's really, really high. Like everybody are going to exchange the Bitcoin, are buying and selling Bitcoin as an investment. So it's 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 really crazy at that time. So the government said, you know, it is time to you know step up and um, having a policy to make sure that it, it the price is not double and it's not hurting too much people. So that's why. Um, they wanted to actually cut the risk from the financial system and let it just leave alone. Um, and the Bitcoin was never, well, it just be a lot by why, but a lot of people um, thinking Bitcoin is banned in China, which is not. The policy never says it's banned in China. It just banned the financial institute are not able to provide services to Bitcoin. Uh, and Bitcoin banking and regulation in China is actually better than USA right now is because there are culture difference in US if you wanted to um, to do a small business or uh, having a new startup it's actually be legal or you know um, you know being you know compliant first you know uh, meet the regulation do the paperwork and find out you know what what can do and what cannot do and people follow the rule. But actually in China, nobody follow the rule. <laughs> so the rule is the rule, but the rule is always coming after some people already did, or some people already earned a, bit, a bunch of money after it. So, um, so the regulation is actually after, come, uh, after uh, there is a big bubble in China that everybody buying Bitcoin, like a crazy buying Bitcoin at that time. Like, um, I remember there is the news on the newspaper that the old lady, like the old lady in China is the money makers. And they have a lot of money and they invest in a lot of different things, especially gold. And then during back then in 2013, uh, November, and there are a bunch of the old lady just get on, like calling us, uh, I want to open a bank account, I want to open an account with you, I want to buy Bitcoin. They don't even know what is Bitcoin. They, you know, interestingly, like yesterday, another lady called me, like, I still have like a three Bitcoins, right? I said like, uh, what's your name? And let me check out. And yes, you still have like Bitcoin. So can I still have Bitcoin, like buying something or selling something? So like, they don't know what is Bitcoin do. They just have money and heard about something and they just buy it. So um, it's it was really that crazy, like everybody buddy, like buying Bitcoin. But then uh, after the price goes down, like they're just left behind because they don't. Um, it's hard for them to understand what is Bitcoin. It's uh, hard to 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 them to actually withdraw the Bitcoin. Like you know, the old ladies, they're not capable to using phone correctly, so they're not able to uh, withdraw the Bitcoin after the price is going down. They were just left behind, and then, you know, never gonna remember it, it's especially the password. And uh, uh, and there is no uh, Bitcoin tax policy yet. Um, um, you know, China are not a very taxable uh, country, so uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, how to say, 
Um, there are a lot of uh, good opportunities if you wanted to do a business in China. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's legal or not. As long as the government not standing up and saying you are illegal, then everything is legal. So <laughs> it's good. Well, it's good to have a business over there, and you're just taking the risks because the government, <coughs> any day they can say that you're illegal because you know they just don't like it. But you know, um, that's. But that's still, you know, it's a good, um, a good environment uh, for those entrepreneurs that wanted to uh, start in their own business and do not want it to have uh, too much burden, especially the regulation is a high cost if you want it to be legal. So license, you know, paperwork, they are all costs. So we believe that, you know, Bitcoin, the reason why Bitcoin is, you know, popular is because um, it's efficient low cost, like like quickly, like nothing. So uh, making it legally or giving them like a bit license, what we're talking about before, are actually kind of giving a burden to the startups, especially that, you know, they're not, uh, they don't have really uh, like a profit or income coming to their way, but they still need to spend a lot of money on the regulation, which is not fair, um, I think so. Um, that's why that you know we believe that you know the China are more uh, good environment to do a Bitcoin or any startups. And this is the whole price after 2013. Um, the Bitcoin starting from the top left, the eight thousand, the top uh, uh, the top right, uh, top left uh, price, and all the way goes down to. Recently, 900 there was a day, or uh, 900 uh, RMB, which is 100 something US dollar, like 130 US dollar or something, which is the lowest, lowest price during this whole two years. So, Huobi um, actually, uh, you know, the price is going down, but even though that there are a lot of companies like Huobi, uh, we're actually moving forward. and. Uh, Expanding. So after we had Huobi, which is the Chinese Yuan and CNY exchange, we um, started having all the way. So Huobi, it's right here. Yeah, Huobi, it's right here. This is the uh, the Chinese Yuan, Chinese uh, BTC. Well, we do have uh, LTC, but uh, Chinese uh, uh, BTC LTC um, exchange. So and then we started having a big yes. It's a US dollar BTC LTC platform, and we launched it in uh, September uh, 2013, uh, 2014. And uh, we then having uh, BitVZ, which is a future and uh, um, yeah, future platform. Um, and also, um, Zhangpu is one of the uh, websites, but we take it down because we combine it with BC together. Uh, these are the Yubibao, if you're familiar with it. Uh, it's a financial product in uh, BBC that I, I will introduce later. And this is our quick wallet. It's the first and number one uh, multi-signature wallet in China that we actually invented. Um, it's, it's the, I, I believe it's the first multi-signature in the uh, whole uh, Bitcoin industry. And uh, this is the Bitcoin uh, mining that we definitely are leading company in the whole uh, Bitcoin industry right now. We decided to do the mining is because there are um, a lot of uh, advantage to doing mining in China. Uh, we, uh, there is an Avalon, there is an Admire, and uh, those headquarters are all in China, um, you know, down south in Shenzhen which, uh, you know, we communicate a lot and they have a headquarter or office in Beijing next to us. So we do communicate a lot and we believe that, you know, they're actually running the business very well and uh, giving for me uh, a power to uh, having sort of com uh, cooperation with them. And then, you know, we are actually uh, doing not exactly mining, but uh, we, we are involving a hashing business. It's not not like mining, but they the end miner they you know they mining 
and then we involve investments on hashing in it, and then we got the ownership, part of the ownership after they um, mined their Bitcoin. So that's kind of the business we invented actually, and by investing all of those, G, uh, the hash, uh, we actually can uh, at least making 20% uh, profit of the mining. So which is a, a really good business, and uh, I don't know exactly how it works, it's really, really complicated, and there are like a four parties actually in the contract, one contract. But it's, it's actually working very well, and every party got their profits very well. So uh, we started doing the trading, we have margin trading, we, uh, we got like uh, three, lever uh, three times leverage of margin trading and 20 times, lever uh, 20 times of Bitcoin futures. And uh, we do, and then yeah, cover the international U uh, uh, exchange, and then we have uh, the ecosystem, and then we have public mining and uh, uh, mining exchange, financial products and derivatives, and the wallets, which is a technology foundation business. So those are the you know those are the line that we think that you know uh, cover the whole industry and will helping Huobi as a big brand going forward, moving forward, and having more competitive in the world. And right now, that's what, we, what we're doing, and we actually corporate with Tsinghua University, which is the top hat, like MIT in US. So Tsinghua University, they are working on a project of MIT, and we are sponsored for it for the whole year, and uh, by sponsor it, they are actually uh, having uh, reports. And uh, actually in three days, in China time, we're gonna, we have a PR release about this, uh, this uh, study and the reports. And uh, that's actually the first Chinese um, inside um, study uh, in the Bitcoin history that released uh, a deep re report, research report about Bitcoin. And uh, for Tsinghua and, and for B, we are joint uh, Bitcoin research initiative and published the first Chinese global Bitcoin and industry reports. And the purpose is educate and influence. Because um, um, you know, if you want to educate market, that's a huge cost. Now, you know, most of the time it's the big corporation or big co company, they you know spend like 10 or I don't know, 6% of the barges to educate market. And as a not very small company like 4B, we still wanted to educate, you know, what this big one and what big one can do in China, which which we think is very, very important to let people know that it's not only an investment product. And in China, people see uh, big one very strange as the investment with capital B. So they think that you know they invested. Um, I gain like ten or thirty percent per year of, of the return. So I, I I need that return. That's why I investment uh, Bitcoin. So it really doesn't matter they're investing Bitcoin or Litecoin or ma uh, or Mastercoin. As long as they make money, they invest it. So they really don't understand how uh, the what's the best part of the Bitcoin. That's why we working with the top tier. Um, University to start to educate our next generation to maybe they are more understandable to you know to the big one and maybe they are um, they are the futures of, of the country so they are able to having a proper or, or good education uh, by us and they will uh, contribute in the big one society much better than what what we're doing right now. So uh, the purpose is educate and influence. We uh, we're having a business leader, entrepreneurs, investors, and policymakers all involved in this study with the school, and we coordinate a lot of connections that we we all have. Especially we bring it in uh, uh, with the PBOB, which is the Chinese Bank, uh, China Bank of, of uh, Bank of China, our leaders and make sure that they they know what is Bitcoin, what is the study about, and uh, they are 
happily they are approved. Uh, we're gonna have a joint announcement in three days. So yeah, we believe that you know, Bitcoin in China will be strong ever. <laughs> um, and to talk about mining, uh, there are a lot of uh, companies are doing mining. Uh, Big for is trips, K K uh, uh, KNC at miner, light lighting business, mining. Yeah, and my the most close friends with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Bitcoin is our mining project, and we're launching, we launch it soon. Uh, we, we think that mining is still a very big important thing uh, in, in, the whole, uh, in the whole world, and China is still the core and the center of mining in the next few years. So we're gonna focus on or concentrating on uh, developing uh, mining in China, uh, which means that you know we're trying to uh, you know being more advantage in the whole uh, Bitcoin industry. So uh, having a good relationship with uh, uh, Bitmine and Bitmain and Bitmain and Nminer, they're actually the same. Um, Nminer is um, well, they are Nminer having two co-founders. And one co-founder is still in Nminer, and the other co-founder left Nminer and started doing their big main. So, but now they're combining together again because you know the price is going down and a lot of people are not making profits. So, you know, it's just interesting that the business is always like enemy friends, enemy friends. <laughs> so, uh, big uh, big main and Nminer is one of our best friends, and then it's Avalon. And those two are the close partnership with uh, Bitcoin. And then those are the uh, different other mining and other things, um, you know, as you can see. Uh, and actually there are a lot of, uh, in China, not only Huobi are doing mining, BTC China are doing mining as well. And they're actually uh, the last person, the third, which is the last person to do mining in China. But they are uh, growing really fast. There, we are like 10% of the total hash. Like we're all 10% of the total uh, hash in uh, in Bitcoin. And uh, I think um, BTC China own like a five to six percent of it, which is considered a really fast growing within like a year. They're just doing a year. Um, and this is the hash rate. It's going up, but it's going sharp down. As a similar to the price of the uh, the big one, so yeah, they're really really having a difficult time. And I heard about that, you know, uh, we invested like a billions just to, to pay the um, electric bill. So when you're running the mining, the only thing you need to do is machine and elect electric. So there is. The machine is by Nminer and Avalon, which we don't need to worry about. The only thing for our cost is electric bill. So we're trying our best to find the lowest, lowest electric bill. And it's also the trend of the, in, with, uh, in the next two years that as long as you have a low cost of the electric bill and you're making profits for sure. So everywhere, like, uh, we try to Korea, like not only we try to find in China, we try to find overseas. In Korea, the electric bill is really, really high. Like nobody can afford to do mining. So we uh, we tried uh, Russia. There are a lot of uh, low cost, like trip, cheap uh, electric in Russia, but they're not reliable because the currency of uh, ruble. Yeah, ruble they're going down sharply, and including the uh, euro, and they're going down sharply. So we have the risk of uh, foreign exchange, FX risks that you know we need to control too. So that's double risks than our finding our own electric in China. So that's why we decided to do doing the electric, uh, trying to find uh, trip, trip electric uh, in China. And so far so good. Uh, question on yes. the mining. Do you guys mine independently, or are you part of a pool? We uh, we actually are partner. We are we are having partners with people 
So uh, one of the partners doing mining, one of the partners doing uh, hashing, like the hashing pool, one of the partner is doing selling. So they're, we're all combined together. It's not like individually you can do. We actually do, uh, separated the process, and by different process, uh, it's you know operated by different part, uh, okay. parties. So who administers the pool? What's, what's what, who's, who's the mining pool administrator? Uh, we are owning the mining, the hash, the mining pool. Okay, so like if, I'm just like looking at like a, a chart of like a breakdown of all the mining pools and how they kind of make up the, the total hashing power in the network, and I'm trying to figure out which one you guys would be part of. Uh, are you talking about the names or? Yeah, are you part of like like fish pool? Are part of Discuss Fish or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Um, I'm not the expert of uh, mining, but if you do are interested in mining, one of our CEO, the uh, the Bitcoin, the CEO of Bitcoin, he's the uh, very expert in early age of the Bitcoin adopter, and he will having uh, giving a speech in Hong Kong Bitcoin in, uh, inside Bitcoin conference. I just get him in. Um, and it's gonna be in May 13 and four, oh, sorry, 14 and 15 in Hong Kong. So anyone, if it's interested, definitely you know could go there and uh, you know talk to him about the mining. He is his experts of the mining. He understands it very deeply. So that's why we have a really uh, deep partnership with N Miner and Avalon. So about the uh, Bitcoin mining. And you know it's really a hard time. Difficulties in increasing. Revenue is falling. You know uh, China is a leading uh, mining country. Fifty percent of the global hashing power. More than seventy-five percent of its finer uh, manufacturing. You know, um, yeah. But uh, right now, uh, um, you know, last year at this time, yeah, last year at this time, I see there are at least a seven to ten. Uh, mining companies just in one city in China, but right now uh, some of them are locked from the industry. Someone are actually broken because of doing the trips. They're investing a lot of money into the trips, but it's not uh, paying. At the very, very beginning, the trip is um, it's hard to get. So people are developing the trips. Uh, you know, no matter how expensive it is. So they're putting a lot of money as well as there is a trip, people will buy it. So a lot of people are spending a lot of like high cost trips and to protect it. But after they produce it, the price is going down. And plus, the uh, uh, there are more people of, uh, in the uh, trips industry. So their products that already produced uh, out of, uh, are, uh, cannot be sold. So um, uh, they actually, uh, you know, um, uh, lost their profits and, and even cannot get back their, uh, their their basic cost from the trips. So uh, you know, there are a bunch of people, uh, you know, quit from the trips industry. And on another round, like new people coming into the uh, mining industry and starting doing again, but then with with the low. Uh, how to say, uh, with the low cost of the trip. But after that, still, uh, a new advanced trip is coming in. So uh, by the two years of the China mining history, there are kind of like three waves that people coming and leaving, not profits and leaving, and making profits still doing. But then the price is going down, no profits and leaving and broken. So that's how actually it's kind of like the period, you know, backing, backing again in China. Uh, but still, a lot of people are doing mining, and right now the miner are actually doing mining itself. At the very beginning, and miner is miner, mining is mining. Mining producer, they only produce the hardware, and uh, miner is buying the hardware and uh, doing the thing. But right now, less and less people are doing it, so everybody having different role, uh, combining uh, to a different role. So uh, you know, miner are doing uh, mining, and mining are doing uh, miner's job. So uh, which means that you know, uh, by the uh, the dump, the decreasing of the hash 
uh, of increasing of the difficulty of uh, hashing power, a lot of people are creating this whole business game. So I have a question on that. So you said that you're investing more in the mining space. I think already um, the revenue has squeezed as much that you can't collaborate more in um, how do you project next year with the next block having? That's a really good question, and I know that definitely um, there are a lot of people, uh, you know, doubting about it. Uh, that's why that you know, as uh, for we, uh, we actually having a secret uh, by a model. We're calculating a model by cal like calculating a model. We actually can know what exactly the price will be, exactly on what date. Uh, only regarding the Bitcoin mining. So we know that you know by what what's the price of the Bitcoin, we will make in profits. So as long as the price is higher than that, we're selling it. So we're making profits. And, and we actually can uh, making sure that you know in the next one or let me say six months we're profitable because we're doing procedure one, two, three, and four. And then after that, well, this is the whole uh, team. They're working on it. And uh, they can share the secrets in Hong Kong conference. We uh, actually, we discussed about it before I came into it. But I only know a little about it, not too much. So yeah, I guess the question was just, do you project to be profitable even after the next having? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And we actually, um, the key point is, the only Kobe can do it. Nobody else can do it because we have the resources, we have the power, we have everything. Because you have everything like one, two, three, four, that's why you can do it and predict it's profitable. Anyone else without without you know one of any of it will not be succeed or making profitable because it's not um, you know you have to have everything with you. That's um, I think that's basically what what the CEO told me, but more deeply theory that he will explain. I um, I just don't understand. <laughs> uh, so yeah, obviously there are China advantage, you know, low cost to labors, passion, manufacturing. And then we're talking about exchange. So uh, besides of Huobi, well Huobi has like, you know, BBC, BES, those are for uh, different um, targets. But uh, we're going to combine for B with BTC and BTS in two months. In two months. So we're going to have a big launch in two months. And uh, we combine to one for B together. Um, that, will be, um, that will be basically uh, uh, at least a good news. Uh, people don't really understand what is BTC and BTS. What's the difference and why there are three names with it? So uh, to make it short, we combine it to one name as of what we that it's already well known. And then we have comp competitor in US, which is Coinbase, and uh, there are a lot of like new coin setter, BSTM, yeah, BSTM is in the main I know, and OKCoin, Kraken, BTC, Bitfinex, like BDC, if it. And an explicit, yeah. So I think uh, the logos are here. Um, Forty percent are in actually located in China, including Bitfinex. Even though Bitfinex is in, um, uh, I think their headquarters is in US because they wanted to apply the license. But still, uh, they are having a really big uh, headquarter in Hong Kong. And I, I talked to the Hong Kong CEO, and uh, they actually are not really uh, op optimum with exchange, but they wanted to turn to another way which they created the Tether. So anybody familiar with Tether? Tether, no? T-E-T-H-E-R, -T -E -T -E Tether. What is that? Okay, so Tether is invented by Big Phoenix, but they actually hire another group to do it. Uh, basically, uh, there are a lot of customers in Bitfinex is arbitrage, are doing arbitrage. So they, to make it easier, they invented Tether. Tether is one Tether equals to one dollar. Um, how does it, like a digital, uh, you know, uh, money. Can be like considered digital money, but it's like one dollar to one, uh, uh, equals to one Tether. 
and you can actually, when you're doing arbitrage with different exchanges, and ideally, every exchanges will use the tether. So if you your people are doing arbitrage from uh, Huobi to Bitfinex, you're actually not moving your uh, money around. Uh, instead, you're moving tether around. And uh, so, so it's like quicker, faster, easier. So instead of your waiting like you know uh, banking deposit for like this one international will be like three to five seven days, and you're moving tether like that. So ideally, they want every exchange to use it. So, oh, well, I quote: there is no, there is not, there. It's only making sense if every exchange using tether. That says from uh, the CEO of Bitfinex. So they want every uh, exchange using it, but um, Bitcoin, uh, some, I'm sorry, Bitstamp somehow never going to use it. So number one right now in the uh, uh, exchange industry is Bitfinex. Number two will be Bitstamp. And right now, BTS is doing, um, you know, uh, liquidity is improving the liquidity result or so. And BTS is number three recently. And then uh, you know, um, and then there's two like oh, very old, like a BTC China. Oh yeah, OK Coin, OK Coin made like a number four or something. But it's because they're having a really bad uh, um, movement. Like uh, six out of nine, their international team people are leaving. Well, not already, already left like a couple of months ago. So their international markets is going down very, very fast. Like nobody taking care of their international business anymore. And I heard about there are another two people, like uh, six out of nine left already, and uh, two out of the three are considering left. So um, so it's a really bad, uh, people are, are saying that because they're doing some unfaithful uh, you know, trading and the international people are not tolerant about it. I don't know the whole story if it's true, it's just a rumor, but that's why, you know, there, right now there's only one person um, in, in their international team and their international um, uh, occupation, like the market occupation, are sharply going down from number two to number five. So that's you know, if you lose people, you lose business with it. Which is, um, I feel pity for them. And uh, right now, so our biggest competitor will be Coinbase in the US, which, you know, we're gonna meet in a couple of days too. So, um, a question about, so <clears throat> you, you mentioned the regulatory environment in China um, and how there's not many regulations when it comes to that. Uh -huh. so, is that. So in the US, I mean, you have to spread the money transfer and anti-money laundering laws right. and that. So right. do, you, do you face none of that to offer an exchange in China or what are the what are the kind of laws or regulations around this? Um, not okay, so the regulation, um, our view to see the regulation is uh, uh, if it's helpful, we're definitely going to follow it. That's why that we didn't open for U.S. residents. Oh, no, I mean in China, what, what are the rules? Or are they not at all? No. So you can just offer an exchange in China with no Right. It, it's only because uh, Bitcoin is commodity, like e-commerce. Like in China, the uh, reality like e-commerce, you don't need any license for it. If it's one, um, the e-commerce will have in regulation, then we probably need to start applying for it. But right now, it's not. Okay. And you also mentioned that um, one of the laws is that um, traditional banks aren't allowed to provide banking services to Bitcoin companies. Uh -huh. So are, are you... That, yeah, that's back to December 13, uh, 2013. Oh, so now it's okay. Now it's better, okay. much better. Yeah. So your bank for the Chinese bank or your bank for the international bank? There were a couple of other ways, like even though you don't have a bank account. Oh, I, okay, I didn't mention. You, even though we didn't have a bank account back then, but we do have a third party providing, like a oh. third party people to doing that. And then there are a lot of other exchange, like BTC China at back then, they're doing voucher. Like you buying a voucher and then they, they you know, consider it's, you know, your thing, uh, your cash already in. 
So uh, there are a, a lot of other ways. Like Chinese people, they always have a lot of ways. Like you never can really stop it. Yeah, if you stop this way, you know, there's always another way coming up. That's how. OK. Um, so, uh, so the gold message, uh, we read a report saying that there are 80% uh, of global Bitcoin trading volume is in China, but actually, uh, which is not true. Uh, um, well, one reason, well, if you're looking at the other book, you may think 80% is in China. But to be honest, there do are some exchanges that are doing on Facebook data, uh, data. So they're trading themselves, by themselves. So that's why the volume looks like really big. But the, actually, it's not that much. Uh, because we are in China markets, we know. If you look at their uh, market depth, um, you can figure out that you know they're actually trading volume is not that high. If you like put a, a, hundred, a thousand Bitcoin in their um, exchanges, the price is going down sharply, which means that they don't have um, the, the liquidity or the, the depth, as, as this looks like. So. Uh, we definitely think that it's much lower than 80% of the trading volume in China, which we estimate that you know, it might be like 50% or more, are a more the uh, realistic estimate, uh, which we still think is high. If like uh, one country, like in China, we have contributed like 50% of the trading volume, it's because, you know, uh, the people in China are seeing it as investment. The people wanted to invest it as long as the price is reasonable and they can see the future is going up, the price is going up. So um, that's how, I think that's the customer base decided that in China, Bitcoin will be a good investor or good financial product in a few years, with at least in a few years. And Bitcoin trading are very popular um, in China, it's also because we have zero trading, zero fee, trading fee. Huobi is one, it's the first one that, you know, we announce the trading fee becomes zero. So there's no trading fee, no deposit fee, no, uh, yeah, no deposit fee for BTC, no deposit fee for fiat, and no trading fee. The only fee, actually the only fee we make it profitable to us is withdrawal. If you withdraw cash, you need to pay like certain like a little amount of it. If you withdraw BTC, there's still no fee. So the only way to keep us still profitable is we charge a little, 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 little fee. The still consider as no trading fee, no deposit fee, and only you know two out of one, uh, one of the two, uh, charging uh, the withdrawal fee. So. Um, uh, but it's, it's still working very well and it's very profitable at least in the past two years, one and a half years. And right now it's because we're having BTC, so we're more profitable than ever. And there are not many other uh, legal investors, uh, investment opportunity in China. So China is interesting. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a big financial market, but a huge uh, lack of financial product market. So people are having a lot of money but don't know where to invest or invest to what. So um, um, that's why when Bitcoin comes, people know about it. Doesn't matter what, what it's for, it's just to invest. Um, so as an investment, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, conservative investors and there are Investing in real estate and gold, and the most popular long-term uh, long-term investment. Uh, so Bitcoin is a digital gold. Um, that only a few people understand this now. Uh, it more education, uh, more education and marketing will create the demands of the Bitcoin as a long. Yeah, this is uh, talking about the long long-term investment, um, which. Sadly, I cannot see that Bitcoin could be a long-term investment in China. 
because um, if you don't really understand their value, you're not able, you're not actually going to commit to hold it for longer. So a lot of people are selling and more and more people, um, not many, but there is a trend that more and more people are living exchange, like living Bitcoin exchange. Uh, I'm not talking about Bobby, I'm just generally talking that people are living uh, in uh, Bitcoin industry because the prices keep lower, you know, from the last year, the end of last year until right now, it's almost to six, seven, seven months already, and the price is not backing up. So people are losing base to Bitcoin, is that, I mean, as an invest, uh, investment product. So people are leaving. And Bitcoin for international transaction, which there is huge potential, and we see it as an international key uh, e-commerce we can use in, uh, in Bitcoin. International remittance that we can use in uh, Bitcoin. And uh, P2P payments that, you know, we probably, and we are, uh, the reason why this time I'm here is because uh, we are actually expanding in US, so we're looking for a full-time job offering a full-time position in the in US. Either in New York, I mean, New York big area, like in, in Boston, or in San Francisco. So ideally, we want to find someone to actually building a bridge between US and China to make, to, you know, explore some, um, some, um, some, um, some business uh, potential, um, you know, uh, opportunities between uh, other international e-commerce or remittance or P2, uh, B2P payment. So we're talking to um, a lot of different companies and try to hire someone locally to you know, become you know, doing the rest of the work after we come back to China. We definitely need someone to be in the US. So uh, if anyone interested you know, here, uh, you can you know, tell your friends that we're hiring. Um, you know, prefer to uh, be in the Bitcoin industry or having a really deep thoughts about Bitcoin. And uh, at this moment, we only are uh, cooperating with financial relatives company. Uh, you know, sadly at this time. Uh, you know, later on, we more like going down to the blockchain technology, maybe. But at this moment, starting as, you know, really somewhere close to the money will generate money. So we're talking about e-commerce, remittance, or P2Ps between China and US. Like lending club. We're talking about lending club, we're talking about uh, India Gogo and uh, uh, Kickstarters. Um, so looking for business development? Yeah, right, right. It's kind of like a bridge that's having a really um, insight of you know, looking at the Bitcoin as an international uh, tool that could build up, you know, you know, something that U.S. doesn't have but China has, or something that China don't have but U.S. has. Either way, or hopefully, you know, uh, round trip. But you know, definitely um, are in financial field. Um, and uh, well, uh, for Bitcoin payments in China, uh, like. In the U.S., there is a big pay that we actually are very respectful for it. But in China, unfortunately, there is no payments method or payments way for Bitcoin. It's because um, there are a lot of there are good companies already exist, like uh, uh, Alibaba. They're doing payments as a Zhifuba, which is the name. Like uh, it's like Alipay. So by using Alipay, you actually everything like within a second like if you pay by mobile phone it's just always like scan a bar and then you finish paying like really simple and easy and fast convenience so we cannot see any market or anything that Bitcoin can use as a payment in China right now it might it might be you know later on uh, it, it could be developed between the, uh, the like international payments that will be better, but right now, like if you go online shopping or something, it's also supported by uh, Alipay. Like you can use Alipay to shop overseas, like e-commerce. Like I bought the shoes, you know, on the U.S. Um, websites, 
but you, by using Alipay and their shipping to China was a nine nine ninety five US dollar shipments. It's like uh, Alipay actually giving the money to do the promotion. So Alipay have a lot of money. They are having a lot of money. They can have through a lot of money to do the promotion. <coughs> so they actually giving back the money to the websites whoever use their services and you know to um, made up their shipping cost you know while they're shipping from US to China so that's way that you know if you're a big company you have a lot of money you are actually are easier to control or having the occupation of the market like a high uh, ratio of the market is because you know you can use capital to play the game if you were startups it's there's no way you were just you know standing on the street and give the flyers everyone had to we are the Bitcoin company please come here to you know check out to uh, check it out it's really really hard for startup to building a business you know everywhere is the same and the Bitcoin media there are only a couple of media but the US like international there are mainstream like Wall Street like uh, CNBC, like uh, Forbes, there are a, a one uh, Forbes blogger. It's very a good friend of mine, and he actually are um, he used to work in the uh, financial field, but now he's dedicated to uh, Bitcoin and always, you know, wanted to learn something new about Bitcoin. And we always, you know, have a chat together, and uh, you know, he was talking that you know in U.S. the gen uh, the journalist are able to having their own own thoughts and writing an article about it. But in China, it's more like you read a, a template. You read everything you wanted to say and send over to them. And they're even lazier, you know, to check it. They will just post it. As if you if you say it good, it will look good. If you say it not right, and it's, it's going to show not right. So they don't think it's their reputation to need to pick. It, they, they actually think that you know uh, you actually read it, you know, bad or you know making some mistakes by yourself. It's not my business. So like, uh, I don't think that you know uh, media in China are ethic, honestly. So I I I still think that you know having um, U.S or like a foreigner media are uh, more like you know care about their thoughts their opinion and it's more respons uh, responsible uh, when they're uh, publishing an article or talking about something and it's more straightforward if you are not doing it correctly or not doing it right they will point it out and make it larger and, and bigger so um, which is really, which, which I don't know if it's a good way or not, but you know, I think there's a huge difference between two, uh, you know, Bitcoin media, like China and yep. international. And for uh, VC investments in China, um, you know, as you can see that we are number three. US is top one, uh, it's more than 25, mil uh, 25 million, and Netherlands is uh, number two, I think the reason is because uh, big furries over there. So to develop a trip, you need a lot of money. That's why um, I think in 2000, uh, 2014, just one year, they actually raised to two rounds of the uh, VC fund. One is 20 million, one is uh, 20 million. So in total, it's 40, uh, 40 million, which consider high. And in China and Canada, China is you know, lower than uh, 5,000. The color? The color, yeah, the question. I don't, I don't, I think it's in different uh, particular area, like maybe in uh, in, just, uh, in exchange, in uh, mining, in wallets, in like financial uh, services. Uh, I think that's those uh, from Coindesk, I, I think, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. But you know, as you can see, that most of VC investment are gone to USA, especially Silicon Valley. That's obviously because all the hot money of the Bitcoin is here. But China, actually, China only received about eleven points. 
11% uh, of the U.S. total. So U.S. have a lot of money, and China is having like more than 50% of the market, but the VC are only investing like 11% of the U.S. Mark, uh, VC in total, which is making the China uh, a little bit uh, unbalanced while they're developing. Uh, so the because people have negative views, the outlook on the economy is That's why they invest less. What do you mean? Like the people yes. look at it as like uh, negatively? Uh, negatively? I don't think it's negatively. As long as the price is high, people are thinking it's positively. No, it's I mean the investors, the VCs. The VCs don't invest as much mm. because they have a negative outlook. I talked to several VCs in China. I think the VCs are more seeing the Bitcoin as a financial product. So if there is a profit, they definitely actually wanted to invest. They, they actually wanted to. Uh, I know one one of our angel, which is Jin Fang, they actually invested in at least five different Bitcoin companies. And the rule, the only reason they didn't rise a round like us with Sequoia is because. First of all, they're passing the right time. The price is going high. Uh, when the price is going high, we got the A round. But the rest of them, they're not getting the money. And more likely, uh, the big reason is because these payments is not working in China. And actually, uh, it's actually mentioned in December 5th. The policy, the PPOP, they actually saying that uh, uh, payments Using Bitcoin as a payment is illegal in China, so that's make it a huge uh, opportunity loss. That you know, um, you know, as a big pay, you know, American has a big pay, which is a really talented and good company. But in China, there will be never exist a company like big pay. It's because it's illegal. So which cuts down. A uh, huge uh, reputation and expectation of uh, Bitcoin in China, and uh, you know the fear that Chinese government policy, um, you know, could change all the time, and negative uh, media coverage uh, and the influence. Yeah, there are a lot of um, uh, media. They're talking something unfaithful and untrue. Something like you know, Bitcoin is is banned in China. It's not been legal. Blah blah blah. So people are not investing anymore, and uh, they're not understanding the the value of the Bitcoin technology. Yeah, those are basically some several points. And the future, which is a good way that we still believe that the future of Bitcoin is good, especially of policy. So this lady. She is Wu Xiaoling. She is the former PBOB uh, deputy director, which is considered the highest government officer who actually officially define uh, define a Bitcoin as a private money, which can exist with government money. So she actually addressed that it's, it's money. It's not commodity anymore. So if it's a money. They act, she actually giving a side um, side area, saying it's a private money. So it's not a fiat. It's not a government currency. It's not a money that government issue. But you still can own it, and it still can be coexist as long as it's a private money, which is a huge good sign for Bitcoin in China. And everybody, and actually everything that comes well, she was addressing it. And Leon and I went to um, this high profile, uh, prof uh, high profile um, um, conference forum. So those are all the government talking about new things. Like nobody understands, but they still need to facing. You know, it's going forward, and they pay attention to Bitcoin and making it as a private money, which which we were really happy. You know, at that forum, and the future policy, there might be, you know, you know, China, you know, the China government wanted to, you know, at least allow the innovation, but still wanted to control the risks. 
So there is always a balance here. And the December 1st policy actually separating um, the Bitcoin risks from the financial system, which right now it's safe, considerably safe for them. The policy right now, at least, is working, except there's new policy unless it's necessary. But the Bitcoin uh, companies uh, like us must be self regulated. Um, you know, that's why we are uh, putting a lot of money and energy and time on um, uh, self checking, uh, security checking, um, and you know, uh, try to work with some auditors. You know, to make sure that our platform is safe. Um, you know, there are a lot of AML and KYC regulation that we set up by ourselves. Um, you know, try to be like self-regulated, uh, and uh, yeah, most likely we're up, uh, up to them this too. So the December fifth thing is, is like consumer protection policy essentially, right? It's not a consumer policy. Um, you know, it's not even a consumer policy. If it, if it is, you know, we will be happy for it because it's protect the consumer. But actually, it's not. It's just, uh, I think the governments feel like, you know, the Bitcoin is bubble. They need to do something. Basically, that's the whole purpose of the summer first policy. They need to stop it. It's growing too fast. Yeah. There is no kind of thing that consumer protection or policy in China yet. Like people are not realizing it, even though it it it, it exists. So uh, more likely are talking about like compliance, like a AML and KYC, and money laundering. They do or you know see it very uh, seriously, but you know not anything else at this moment. And there might be some final thoughts, you know, I wanted to share with you. Um, first of all, as a product, uh, product uh, financial product, uh, Bitcoin is a really a great investment. And international payments and money transmit will be coming soon. That we're working on it. Hopefully, you know, after we have a BD or like a personnel in the US, that will be fast, moving faster forward. And uh, as a payment method in China, and uh, you know, Bitcoin might be in a long time. Um, if you know, what about the global currency? A lot of people questioning about it. Uh, you know, uh, Leon and I have discussed about it for a long time, and uh, uh, I still believe in uh, Bitcoin. There is a small chance, even though it's small, that become a global currency. Um, I think as a U.S. dollar having a lot of different way or uh, different roles in uh, the international market, like money market right now. Like even though the government are issuing U.S. dollar, and there there might be uh, inflation with it, but still it's a global currency. Um, but I think that the global currency need to be very independent, not influenced by any government or anyone can be, make it inflation. So I still think that Bitcoin, there is a small chance of it. Uh, but uh, uh, Leon having different way, a uh, view of it, he thinks that it's gonna be a long, long, long time to become a global currency. And uh, uh, you know, um, well, Bitcoin is something of a advantage, but you never know that there is another new Thing coming up more advanced than uh, more advanced than Bitcoin. So 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 right now we think that you know cryptocurrency is a trend uh, to the whole you know whole world, but but it might not be the Bitcoin. It might be some other thing that we don't know. But there is a high chance of the Bitcoin that become. Um, a uh, very top of the cryptocurrency uh, thing is uh, because it's uh, you know decentralized and a lot of people understand it and are using it right now. So um, we may uh, you know the the only reason we're still in the Bitcoin industry is because we believe in, in Bitcoin having something. Yeah. So that's 
So as a blockchain technology that um, we're really sorry that we didn't put uh, much energy and budget, budget on it. And I know that Bitcoin Foundation almost broke. That's why they wanted to change their way uh, to, uh, to uh, blockchain technology. Uh, you know, instead of the, uh, you know, before they were educating the markets and, you know, raise funds from the big names. But right now they're more uh, so, uh, focused on the blockchain technology, which is a good thing, but they still need money to run it. But, you know, unfortunately they spent most of the money for nothing in the past two, one to two, two years. That's why nobody gives them the funding anymore. So, which is, um, which, you know, I feel really sorry about it because the foundation is actually a good thing that, you know, we actually need a big foundation. It's just the people running it uh, as a business are uh, a very uh, losing business. So uh, probably, you know, uh, a new people like our government right now are running the Bitcoin Foundation, hopefully to, uh, you know, giving a new hope to it. So all the core devs that gather and then a couple of people at the foundation are going to be working at the MIT Media Lab. Oh really? Yeah. So they're like cooperating with MIT? Yeah. Like MIT invited them or what? Um, there was an announcement today they've been hired by the MIT uh, Digital Currency Initiative. Really? So they're doing oh, really? work on core development. Um, they'll also be kind of I think that's a good move for them. Right. Yeah. They really need to focus something. But before they're just spending money and they're losing their reputation a lot. Like a lot of people around me, like they're just talking shit about Bitcoin Foundation. Well, it's not not the Bitcoin Foundation. Just the developers who were employed by the Bitcoin Foundation uh -huh. are now employed by MIT. Oh. So there's no association with the Bitcoin Foundation. And oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So how many core development uh, core developer they have? It was three of them. Uh, Vladimir, Gavin, and Corey. Oh, oh, so, oh, that's why. Oh, yeah, okay. So because of their have oh, it's too much gossip. Or because of their uh, have uh, they're turning to the awkward development. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people leaving. Like I at least you know six of those are leaving the uh, big competition. Uh, you know, because they're turning a different direction and they're cutting off uh, kind of like laying off people and corn deaths. Which is the um, the the new new site? I don't know if you guys know CoinDesk. They're actually laying off too. So because the price is really down at this moment, are a lot of company without a good funding or raising money are actually cutting people. Um, you know, just feel I, I just really feel sorry about it. But you know, people are still hanging on there even though they're not working on um, uh, you know paid. Uh, to write a Coindesk article, I know you know a lot of people are doing it for free and finding more like a daily job, uh, still in Bitcoin uh, industry, and then you know writing article on the side job, which you know I feel like so happy for them. Yeah, basically that will be it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> any, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So you said that uh, uh, it was, as far as I understand, it was illegal for your company to um, the, the transfers of money with the regular banking system was illegal. Is that correct? Um, on December first, at that time, yeah. So at that time, we didn't use the banking money transfer. Instead, we using the third party payments services and back then it's much better that we uh, gradually open bank account with different banking uh, so uh, it's at this moment right now if you go online try to do the deposit and withdraw it's smooth and there's no problem by using the banking so I'm sorry, can you say that in a, so, so, so you're sort of working around the regulation is that what you're doing sort of that's right that's right well um, um, which it's a public secret right now. Mm -hmm. Like the Chinese exchange, they're always find a way. Mm -hmm. Like when the government saying 
first of all, the government didn't say that it's banned. You know, it's just bend, not bending us. They're bending the financial services, like mm. our banking. Mm. They're bending them to provide, not providing um, services to us. Mm. So it's nothing about us. It's always about the banks, you know. Mm. So uh, at that time, we didn't use any bank services anymore. Mm. So we actually created like um, third party services, like authorized to personnel services, uh, vouchers and other stuff, you know, to uh, make it go through. It's a little bit complicated at that moment, like people are, need to be two more steps to work. But right now, it's coming back the regular way, which the government, well, the crisis like that, like nobody gonna really care about Bitcoin anymore. So um, there is no need for regulation to exist, to, you know, funding or stopping it. So that's why, um, you know, it's coming back, gradually coming. What do you mean nobody will really care about Bitcoin anymore? Uh, it's because, first of all, uh, the total market share of Bitcoin is only like three to four billion in total, which, consider this, it's not a big number in China. Like, the government have much, much, many things need to worry about. You know, this, consider this, you know, market share, it's not a uh, you know, even though it's a problem, it's never going to be a big problem. It's because it's only three million for them. So it's not something that they need to worry about at this moment. If it's a price going up, like that was say if a tri triple million or billion, then that's need to be, you know, worried about. If anything.